So it was a 13 mile drive to get here. Hopefully not a waste of time. All right, so uh, just uh, left air gas. Well, technically I left air gas a few minutes ago. I just left Cumberland Farms. Got myself a nice iced coffee for the ride home. Got some gas. Anyways, you know, I talked about air gas and, uh, being like the strictest in the business as far as things like tank exchanges and things like that. And I feel like now I, I, I was wrong to, to make that assumption because, well, first, let me tell you why I said that. I said that based on just what I had read as personal experiences from various people who had gone into their local air gas. Now, I think a lot of it has to do with what kind of a working relationship you already have with that particular uh, vendor, for instance, you know. You know, it's like any other business. You know, not every McDonald's you walk into might be as friendly and clean as you wish it would be. That being said, even individual employees in the same branch might treat you differently than you might expect. It's not always black and white. So there's a certain amount of leeway that they can give you, and the amount of leeway that they're gonna be willing to give that individual is really gonna be based on several factors that include, you know, uh, loyalty, personality, you name it. Let's start with the first thing. I walk in there, I see a counter guy work in there that I know personally. And so I decide to wait for him to finish up with a customer so that I can speak to him about my, my issue. So the first thing I say is, hey, I got a Millimatic 250. I don't have a tank. I'd like to get a tank. I said, I previously was told I could get a uh, 20 pound cylinder here. Uh, and I said, however, I said, I don't want to, I was also told I could lease a tank, but I don't want to get into a lease because I don't do enough welding. I said, but I would like a larger tank. Do we, what do you have for options? So he went right over to a rack that they have uh, up against the wall at display, which has several tanks lined up by size. And uh, he pointed to an 80 cubic foot tank and said, this is the largest tank that we sell. You would own this tank. It's $190 filled with Argon CO2 mix. And 190 bucks and you're out the door with a full tank and you own that tank. So then my next question of course would be, well, A, the tanks that I brought with me, are they worth anything uh, towards exchange? Or if not, are they something I could market possibly and, you know, in other words, if I sell that tank on Craigslist, I want to know whether or not I can tell the person with a straight face, hey, yeah, you can take this tank and as long as you want to pay for the recertification fee, they'll swap it out. So he came out, he took a look at the two tanks, the two CO2 tanks that I had brought, uh, I'm sorry, the three CO2 tanks that I had brought, and the two rusty ones, the one that looked really bad, that still has CO2 in it. That one and the one that was also a steel tank that's empty. So he said, those two tanks right there, those are junk. And he said, the problem is the physical condition they appear to be in with the amount of rust that's on them, they wouldn't be able to recertify those tanks. So he said, those are junk, basically scrap metal. But then I asked him, so if I took that tank and I wire wheeled it and cleaned it all up and repainted it so it physically looked better, could I bring it in then and swap it out? Because I said, what I need to know is whether or not I can sell that tank to somebody because it's got CO2 in it, the one that's you know still pretty full. Can, they, can I sell them that tank so they can use the CO2 that's in it and when it's empty, will they be able to come back and swap it out for a full one? And he said, yeah, it's about 38 bucks. I was like, oh, okay, that's good. So 
So it will it will actually save somebody money as opposed to if they just walked in off the street with no tank and needed to buy a 20 pound cylinder with CO2 in it. So now I'm thinking I don't want to buy the 80 cubic foot for 190 right now. I want to wait until I clean up this tank and then I'll bring it back and I'll I'll be able to basically uh, swap it up. So then the million dollar question of course was well what about can I get a credit towards the 80 cubic foot tank for the newly painted 20 pounder I'm going to bring a CO2 tank. So then I uh, I said you know there's another tank I didn't bring with me. I told them about that big uh, what is it 120 or 150 cubic foot oxygen tank that I've got that's marked sold and interestingly enough he said that they're changing they've changed the policy and because they want to be able to keep track of tanks and, and avoid lawsuits and things like that that now they're insisting that you have a cash that you have an account with air gas when you're swapping out those bigger tanks even though even though I may own that tank, but that's no big deal. So, uh, you know, if you get a line of credit with them, obviously it's no no problem at all. If you're buying gas from them all the time, but if you're a guy who walks in off the street, what he's saying is they want you to set up a cash account, and I have no problem doing that. So, that's where we stand on the tank dilemma. Well, I just finished sanding, stripping the two tanks in preparation for a quick repaint. And uh, the surprise to me is that the two t of the two tanks, the one that initially looked worse, this one, this is the one that had some bands of some, like big rubber bands that had melted to it and was stuck to it and looked like a real horror show, actually seems to be in better condition underneath all that rust. Uh, it's got a lot less pitting in it than this one does. And also, I think this is a better prospect for exchange because this tank says 2F72 over here. There is a bunch of recertification dates stamped over here and the newest one is a 93. This one does not have a DOT stamp anywhere on it it says ICC so ICC must be another organization DOT is of course Department of Transportation I'm not sure uh, that's probably International Cylinder Council or something like that uh, cylinder committee <laughs> 3 AA 1800 so I would say this 3 AA is it's a steel tank and that it's uh, 1800 PSI um, but down here, what looks like dates, the first one is uh, 560. So I mean, this looks like this tank might be in 1960 that was recertified in 65 and then recertified again in 77 and then recertified again in 80 and then recertified again in 88 and then again in 93. This looks like a really old tank. This one on the other hand, the one that's still got carbon dioxide in it and was the scarier looking one originally, uh, this one has a DOT number right on it, stamped right on it. So this is DOT 3AA, again, steel tank, 1800, again, 1800 PSI. Uh, and it's got a bunch of other stuff. And it's also got a TC, dash 3AA uh, something one M 138 I wonder if that's a military 
nomenclature. TC-3AA M138 might be a military nomenclature. There's a date here, 99. This looks like a serial number. But the, the thing about this tank that the other tank does not have anywhere is this tank clearly has a TW33.1 LB, which means tear weight 33.1 pounds. And the counter guy at Air Gas told me that the tanks that have a tear weight on them um, makes it easy for them to identify what was in the tank. So if this label was not here, they should be able to identify from the tear weight. So that's, uh, that's a helpful tip for them when they're trying to figure out where, what, what a tank might have in it if the labels are missing, I guess. All right, let's give these a uh, shade tree paint job. That's one coat of primer and it's already looking fantastic. <laughs> All right, primer was dried enough so I was able to lay them on their sides and prime the bottoms. And uh, by the time that dries, it'll be too dark to finish this today. Tomorrow, we'll put some paint on it. Well, the bottom of this one's not going to look so pretty. I saved it from completely falling. <laughs> but uh, I just had to put it down on the board because it was too heavy to just stand there trying to hold it while I tried to re-rig up the, the way I had the uh, wire wrapped around the branch. I could feel it starting to let go and I grabbed it just in time. And here's the one I did earlier today and it uh, came out pretty good.